This is about the ADVINS trial. ADVINS is a virus that can selectively kill neuroendocrine cancer cell and induce an immune response against the cancer. We have gotten money through crowdfunding uh, and large contribution to run a clinical trial. We are now in the phase one clinical trial, which is about finding toxicity and finding the safety level where the virus can be used for treatment. A total of 12 patients will have to be treated at four different dose levels. So far, we have treated five patients, and we have still seven to go. Uh, the first patient was treated in March 2016, so we hope that we can now finish uh, the, no the next seven within the next two years from now. So the phase one trial is about mm -hmm. safety data primarily, that is the primarily endpoint. But of course we are looking at also if there are efficacy, uh, if there are responses. And we have in fact seen responses already at the lowest dose level. Uh, we have seen uh, occasions of, of tumor shrinkage uh, in the liver that has been treated. So it is, it is promising. But before we say anything conclusive, we need to finish the f this phase one trial and we need to even treat more patients to make you know, any firm conclusions. So it's very early days, very, very preliminary so far. Things could have gone faster, and then I wish it had, had gone faster, but I think it is a normal process. This is a very complicated treatment. Uh, we can only treat one patient at a time because we, we, if we see any toxicity, we don't want to expose more patients to that toxicity. So it's one, one step at a time. We need another seven patients. And at the moment, we have managed to recruit three more patients just now in February. And hopefully, if all these accept to be part of the study, we think that we need only f another four in the, during the rest of the year. At the moment, we have only included patients from Sweden because for logistic re reasons and also for the authorities wanted us to start with Swedish patients in the phase one when we look at uh, toxicity and tolerance of the compound. But for the next uh, uh, phase 2A, we might uh, recruit patients from the Scandinavian countries as well as from UK. Vin started this on his own. He, he fought his sickness on his own. I mean, we were there with him and we really tried to support him, but he, he was a strong man and he, was, he, he, wanted to, to, he wanted to achieve this on his own conditions. As, um, as he uh, was getting sicker, we were putting together the foundation, we were doing the legal, and he was slowly introducing me more and more into it and desired my participations, my opinions, and um, as he was really unwell toward the end of his life, that was really his message, carry this on, please. And uh, I've taken it on board, and for me it has become um, a real, uh, oh, I have to find the right words, but it has really has a, a real meaning. And, and to find a meaning in your life when you've lost somebody is, uh, is, is, um, is a lifesaver. Because this project is just so unusual, where you, you, you have uh, the doctors, the patients, the journalists, and the funders who meet together and, and can together make a difference and m be involved in the medical world, in the science world, and this, this can make a difference. And I, I think uh, it helps the, 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 the medical world and the common people to come in one common ground. And uh, I, I, I think it, it is important, it carries on, it is important that it achieves and I really hope it's going to work. We started this collection just, I discovered these papers that the research group here had written. I discovered that nothing was being done about this drug to develop it. And it seemed to me extraordinary. Here was something that stood the potential of doing good, that it needed to be tested to ensure, to make sure that it, it did do good. I mean, it may not, it, and it may. And, but at least needed to be tested. So I wrote a story about it, and the response was instant. It was an altruistic movement, and the first time crowdfunding has ever financed a clinical trial. It's an entirely patient-funded trial, and patients and their relatives and their loved ones and patient advocates. But it entirely comes from the people, this trial. And that, to me, is so powerful. And I think to the people who donated money, this was a trial from the people. This was what the people wanted to happen, and they are prepared to fund it. 
and they did. And it's a triumphant thing, I feel, and I feel people felt it was a triumphant thing to do this, and important to do, to show that you didn't have to be a scientist, you didn't have to be inside the organization to do something useful. Outside people could help as well, and they could cooperate with the scientists to produce something that was valuable and could benefit humanity.